There are three kinds of sample we're looking at. The first one we looked at was the random sample. I'm going to explain what the second one is, okay? But before I explain what it is, you have to realize why there is a problem with just random sampling. So put your pens down for a moment and look up. Put your pens down and look up. You might be getting a, a theme to this, by the way. In the real world, every solution we design to a problem tends to create its own problems. So we design new solutions and just try and keep working with things and massaging things. Like it's not like some someone up on a mountain wrote on a you know etched in stone, random samples shall be the way that you know, that, that, that is done. It's like people will just try to solve this problem. Okay? Random samples are really, really useful, but but they don't always achieve their goal. Now, this is why I put this in another color and I emphasize to you, right? Equal representation is the goal. Now, I want you to just jot down a few numbers with me. Let's just consider our school. Let's just consider our school for a minute. Okay? Now, in a school of 2,000 students, and I know this is not exactly, but it's close enough for us to work with it, about half of us are boys and half of us are girls. There Thereabouts, okay? If I wanted to select a group, for example, a sample of nine students out of our 2,000, okay? By the way, does anyone know, like nine is a famous number to put on like a, a bunch of people representing. Does anyone know why nine is an important number? Come on, legal studies people. No? What? So, so nine, nine is a very, very important number in the legal world because it's the number of people on, it's the number of justices in the US Supreme Court. Okay, so it's a really yeah, big deal. But like, yeah, yeah, huge, like that yeah, we, we talk about the Australian courts. Yeah, that's disappointing, yeah, like, disappointing. It's a really big deal. Anyhow. <laughs> suppose, suppose I want to pick out of our school, I want a panel of nine, right? So this is going to be my random sample. Now, interestingly, if I do something like this, okay, give every single student in the school a number, and then you know use our grid or our calculator or our spreadsheet to get numbers from one to two thousand, okay, I'm going to pose a question to you, and then I just want you to have a guess as to what you think the answer might be, okay, and then I'll tell you what the answer is because I actually crunched the numbers, okay. Panel of nine, right? Panel of nine. Clearly, it'd be good to get an equal representation of boys and girls, or pretty close to that, okay. Now here's the question I'm going to pose to you, and I'd ask you to tell me what the probability is. Maybe you want to write down the question. What's the probability, what's the chance of either having twice as many boys as girls, or having twice as many girls as boys? In other words, the majority is more than double the minority, whatever that happens to be. Whichever way that is, okay? So that would be like 6-3 or 3-6 or 7-2 and 2-7, that kind of thing, okay? Now, I want you to just use your intuition, okay? On a, on a scale from 0% to 100%, that's a good idea, thank you. What do you think is the chance that there will be a more than 2-to-1 two, two or more majority? Because clearly that would no longer be equal representation, right? That would be failing the intent, okay? So here's what I want you to do. Think, I'll give you about 15, 20 seconds, scale of 0 to 100. How likely, as a percentage, do you think it is that this will actually be the case? Just think about it for a moment. Think about what the chances are, just roll them around in your head. <laughs> equal number of boys, equal number of girls. Hey, I feel like what? this is a trick question. Is this like So, let me ask you this. You've got, I hope you've written down some number. It doesn't mean it matter how close or how wrong it is, okay? Do you think, would you say, <laughs> on a scale from very unlikely to sort of unlikely to very likely to like absolutely certain. Where do you think it is on the scale? Where do you think it is? Yeah? Unlikely. Pretty unlikely? Who agrees with unlikely? Yeah? yeah? Decent number of people. Okay. I'm going to tell you what the number is because I went and crunched it. 
It's 51%. Oh. There's a 51% chance that the boys will be double or more than the girls, or the girls will be double or more than the boys. In other words, I'll show you in a minute if you like. In other words, it's kind of made a mockery of this equal representation idea, right? So, to solve this problem, right? To solve this problem, remember? We're in the business of <laughs> solving problems by coming up with new solutions that end up with new problems, but that's okay. What we're trying to introduce is, if you've got like groups, subgroups in your population, in your target population, draw something like this, um, like a rectangle with different sort of um, proportions here. So if you've got a bunch of subgroups in your target population like this, If you say, okay, I want there to be equal representation of all these different kinds of subgroups within my sample, right? All you have to do is say, well, how much of the group is this red group, right? Is it how much of the population is this red group? Let's just like make up some numbers. Suppose this is like, you know, uh, let's, uh, I think it's a bit less than that actually. Let's call that 19% because 19 is my favorite number. Let's call this like 41%. Let's, this is a small one, let's call that 7%. Uh, this is like, I don't know, 12%. What's left over? Can someone work this out for me? 19 plus 41, 60. 67. 79. So that leaves 21. So my sky is a bit off, okay? But just imagine here are our five groups. What I might like to do is to say, okay, in my sample, however large it will be. I want to make sure that 19% of my sample is from the red group. And I want to make sure 41% of my sample is from the blue group, and so on and so on and so on. Okay? Now these subgroups here, okay, they have a really important name. They're called strata. Uh, it's just the Latin word for layers, which is why we draw it like this. Okay? So because what we're doing is we're taking proportions from each of the strata to try and get this equal representation, we call this <laughs> almost. We call this a stratified random sample. Fancy word, okay? It just means it's all layered, and I want to make sure I get some of each of the layers. I want to get less of the small layers and more of the big layers. Does that make sense? So why did you So this is just suppose in my population, my target population. This is everyone, okay? There are some people in this group. Suppose they, these could be ethnicities, for example, okay? It's like 19% of the population are going to be, you know, Latino American. 41% uh, of the population are going to be Caucasian. And then 7% are going to be Asian or whatever it is, okay? I want to make sure my sample has the same proportions as the target population, right? So what would I do? Let's come back to school for a minute. What would I do here to ensure out of my nine... I get a sample that is equal representation. What would I do? So select an equal amount of each of the Yeah, very good. I'd say, well, I've picked an odd number, which is a bit awkward, but suppose we go four and five. That's close enough, okay? Maybe I'll say, okay, look, I'll say, randomly number the boys and then pick four of them. Then randomly number the girls and pick five of them. Okay. Then I'm going to avoid this kind of problem. I'm not going to, by chance, get all girls and no boys, like we almost have in this class, okay? I'm going to get something reasonably close to equal representation. Does that make sense? Yeah. 